table fans? <laughs> Harlequins. Oh yeah, that is what we're talking about today. So first off, it's easy to get jaded around here because there's so many like amazing armies coming through. And so I'm like, uh, Yonorama, another 10,000 point thing. So, but, uh, so it's been a while since I like got really interested in a codex where I was just like pouring through it. And this is definitely one of, I was just kind of going to brush up on it and be like, all right, Harlequins, whatever. It's another throwaway thing. And, you know, and by the way, us war gamers, we are starting to get very spoiled, very spoiled. I've even noticed it in my industry. It's like, as things shape up, it's like people's like, those expectations go up, but that's great. That's what pushes the world uh, forward, I think. You know, it's like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't buy a car with no air conditioning in it, right? But, uh, you know, come on guys, who, who remembers that? Who remembers 480 air conditioning? Roll down all four windows and go 80. So, anyway, yeah, the like, Games Workshop is just putting out, do you, do you remember when it was like one release in a month and that would be like this, uh, we did this plastic kit. I remember when they started doing plastic kits and they were just like, look at these aluminum blocks. That they, I mean, you could just tell that the guys at GW were like excited for this stuff. And not only that, but there's these great new uh, like startup companies that are just like, they're hungry. They want their game to take root. They're producing this amazing stuff. And some of them really are starting to like, they're putting out waves of stuff now. It's really, really fantastic. Like, um, I don't know, um, uh, Cool Mini's uh, Dark Age. That's really, you know, taken flight. I remember interviewing them like three years ago. Um, oh, hold on. I just need to make a really quick note. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Harlequins. First off, better men than I have reviewed this book already in terms of like how competitive it is and you know how to integrate it into other armies is like an auxiliary force and really that's kind of the feel of it is that you know you don't just do this you take them as like a supplement but i i'm mark my words i'm doing a harlequin's army because this stuff it is so cool oh my gosh i've just been like oh, i've been falling in love with this book yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, there's no good comment that can come of that. Okay, so Harlequins, first off, the art is, okay, so my review is not going to be like competitive tournament play or whatever. There's other people that have done that. So first off, the book, oh, the art is just so, look at this, hold on, boom, lavish art, boom, lavish art. Oop, let's get it in the picture. Boom, lavish art. Map of the Webway. Boom, more lavish art. Oh my gosh. What, look, hold on, let's see what's on the next page. I wonder what it will be. Boom, oh, he's me, me dropping the book. Boom, lavish art, again. Oh my gosh, more. I mean, look at this. This guy is a bad AMF, man, right there. Oh, amazing. My gosh, I think I just ripped this book twice. So, all right, folks. Oh yeah, like color schemes and stuff. So let's get, so the models, first off, there is a plastic uh, Harlequins kit now, and I'm not overly familiar with it, but there it is. Uh, so I need to order me some of those. Like, look at that. Oh, for no apparent reason, just this, you know, cover worthy art that we're just, we're just gonna put in there for no apparent reason. Awesome. Yeah, why, why would you buy this book otherwise? Black and white Harlequins, come on. That's not happening. I, now, I, and I'm a fan, I, I don't like like all the weird little patterns and like, you know, uh, card suit things on them. I'm gonna do mine like more stylized, which they, they do have represented in here. But some freehand, I really like kind of the domino field stuff they have going on. Let me show you something with that. Like, uh, like this thing right there. I think that's a void weaver. I don't know. Okay, so um, so let's talk about the actual list itself. So for me, I usually look at HQs as like an afterthought. So I actually haven't looked at them very closely. And uh, so you've got your regular troop, T-R-O-U-P-E, trope, 
I don't know how you say that exactly. It's, uh, they're 15 points each for five, so 75 points, but your troop master uh, is a, an extra 20 points, and he's kind of bundled in there, so you got, he has to be there. And, but he is kind of like a little hero. He's got two wounds. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a mid-level hero for 35 points, so not too shabby. Uh, he's got two wounds. And uh, a big thing in this book, and when you're looking at any unit entry or army in general, is survivability. It doesn't matter how great they are, if they do not have either A, a way to kind of alpha strike in and deliver their punching power without getting killed first, so that could be a transport, it could be a drop pod, it could be that they're a shooting unit and they deep strike, uh, something like that, then they're not that good. So, and that, that's a problem sometimes with point costing is that it's like they keep adding points because, oh, they do all this amazing things. But yeah, their toughness three with a five up invuln, that's it. So you've got to, so you've got to look at like different ways to get these guys their survivability. And one of them that can't be understated is high initiative and hitting power which is even if you're charged, if your initiative is higher, and by the way, these guys start at six, seven for the master. So these guys are outgunning, you know, typically hero types for, um, I, I'd say most other races. And so, but the question is, you know, because if you start like giving them like uh, specialty weapons then the, uh, that cost just goes up, but they can be kitted out, um, like very uniquely. I mean, to me, the troop uh, unit, which is basically the only troops choice in here, as far as I can tell. Yeah, it is. Um, they uh, they reminded me a little bit of uh, like Greynat Paladins. Like they were really spoiled for choices. And so they have a holo suit that's a five up in bone. And in fact, let me just double check to make sure that's right. By the way, I like that the army books now have consistent placing of the information. So like all the rule stuff is in the very back and that's fantastic. So, uh, I'm sorry, flip belt, no, holo suit. Here it is. Yeah, five plus invul. Yeah, so it's an invul, so that's really nice. Like there's hardly anything that takes that away. And so it's not like a cover save. So shuriken pistol, close combat weapon, plasma grenades, which is nice and a flip belt, which allows them to ignore difficult terrain. And that's, that's fantastic. And here's why, because, uh, well, at least when I play the orcs, the wrecked trucks, they kind of pop out, when the truck is wrecked, they hop out behind, then they're out of line of sight. So some good positioning with your uh, transports could really help these. In fact, I, I don't think the Harlequins really are that great without the transports that, that go with them because it's a defensive measure and it's a maneuverability measure. And also there's some tricks that you can play with it as I'll talk about a little later on. Um, so yeah, and, but with the flip belts, they can just get over the wreckage and not have their charging. Because if these guys charge you, it can, you know what, I, it, it can be devastating. Guys, Sean, finish your sentences. Uh, all right, so you've got, there's one thing that I noticed here that I was just like, I had to look at it like four times. I'm like, please tell me they didn't FAQ this and just nerf this. And it's the Harlequin's Embrace. It's a, it's, ba it's just a melee weapon, you know, strength three, uh, but it has Embrace of Death and it gives them Hammer of Wrath with D3 strength six hammer of wrath attacks. Now in the basic rule book, it says hammer of wrath automatically hits. And in here, redundantly, they say it, they, that they hit automatically. So I don't know if that was needed for some reason. Maybe someone can give me an insight why the rule said hits automatically and here it says hits automatically too. But in any case, so when, so let's say a troop of say six of these guys uh, charges in, that's going to be on average 12 strength six hits. That's amazing. I'll take that. Any, that's going to vaporize a unit of orcs. I mean, it's basically, it's 10 wounds. So take your t-shirt saves and see who's still standing. I mean, and then they'll get their regular attacks at strength six. So I see Harlequin's embrace as five points, a model extremely well spent, very alpha strikey, Definitely like that. Um, 
So they can have a, neuro, a neurodisruptor, and that is, it's actually, uh, hold on, that's kind of spendy, but not too bad. Uh, it's uh, just a Fleshbane pistol AP2. But that's wound two up and AP2. So not, not too bad, actually. Uh, fusion pistol is effectively a Melta. Yep, that's right. Strength 8 AP1 Melta, but it's only range six. So I'm pretty sure you have to be within three inches to, to get that uh, 2D6, but not bad. Uh, but again, it's one of the more spendy options with them. Uh, Harlequin's Embrace, which I just talked about. I think that's one of the best. So you got the Caress, the Kiss, and the Embrace. So yeah, these guys make it sound good, but it actually hurts. Uh, so um, hold on a second. Okay, so they can have, a, and they, they can have all three. They're about the same points cost. It's, uh, it's pretty low. Um, and uh, the caress uh, is uh, hit rolls of six are AP2. And glancing or glancing hit. So uh, 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 it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you got to roll the six. So it's kind of a little bit of a bonus. I actually wouldn't buy that over the Harlequin's Embrace. I mean, that thing's just crazy. So the Kiss, so what's the difference? The Kiss of Death, oh, one of their attacks is Strength 6 AP2. Now, now you're talking. Now over the, over the whole of the troop, you'll probably get, uh, if they all had it, you'd get uh, four hits, right, out of the six, typically, because their weapon skill is five. By the way, the Troop Masters is six. So these guys are, are pretty skilled. And, um, and if you roll a six to wound, then it is instant death. So that's, that's a nice bonus. Actually not too bad if the whole troop is like going in on something like very big. So, you know, they, they could potentially take down, I mean, it would make these guys certainly a danger to like big guys, like monstrous creatures and stuff like that because uh, if you, let's say you had six, six guys, four of them are going to hit. And uh, if you, so you'd roll to wound. So if any one of those were a six, and it's likely there's probably a 70, 75% chance with four hits that one of them is going to be a six. And I don't know, 60? Uh, that uh, it would be, in, it would just instant death that. So not too bad. Not too bad. I wonder what the initiative of a hive tyrant is. I think it's eight. So that would be, that would be bad. So, but I, I see Harlequins as taking the troop, if you equipped them right, uh, as being able to take on, take on a lot of different comers, basically. So uh, Troop Master gonna have a power sword, um, haywire grenades, uh, or he can take enigmas. So he can take like the weird war gear stuff, which is kind of cool. And uh, they can have a star weaver as a dedicated transport. So let's talk about the new weavers because there's, there's three units in here that have the title weaver in them, okay? So here's, here's how I do it. You got the star weaver and void weaver, okay? And those are like a venom sized creature. But at first I was like, oh, they just took the venom chassis and like added different things. No, it looks to be a completely different thing. So I, I don't know, I'd actually have to get a Venom out and see if it's, if it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's completely different. And they really, they really mixed well the elements of Dark Eldar and Eldar in them. So, because supposedly these guys kind of, you know, float between the two different factions. Fantastic. Okay, so Void is space, stars are in space. So these types of weavers are up there, Void Weaver and Star Weaver. So the Star Weaver is the transport and the Void Weaver is the gun platform. Okay, then you got Sky Weavers, which are basically glorified jet bikes. But if I may, these things come at a pretty hefty price tag. I'm gonna talk about the price on these because these are definitely one of the most interesting uh, entries in there. And they cost like a land speeder. So, I mean, they ain't sheeps. So it's basically, and they come in units. Uh, they are, as far as I can tell, I think they're on 60 millimeter bases. So, uh, but, and the painting on this, so in terms of paint, it's interesting because 
I also run this company that does professional painting. So I look at like a land speeder. So here's a land speeder. Okay, great. This is how much time and the cost and labor to get this done. Then there's a land speeder storm where you paint the same chassis and you think, oh, well, it should be the same. It's a land. No, no, there's like five scouts on it. You got to paint a unit of five guys just to get all the little doohickeys on it. And same thing with these. It's like, you got to paint the bike. You got to paint two riders and uh, one of the riders sitting down, but uh, the other one stands, so it's a standing up and he's a full on guy. Another in interesting item of note is that, uh, so people, so our standard is level three is kind of the basics, you know, war gamer standard. Um, and uh, so, you know, it could be like, you know, prime, overspray, dry brush, wash would definitely be like a level three type thing. But Harlequins, they require all this freehand. So it's like, so pricing them becomes weird. So if you don't want the freehand, great. They can be priced like more or less like regular guys. So I made it for Harlequins, I made minimum level four. That's the minimum that you that you can buy into those. Because there's no way to do them simply and do them even remotely right. Even if you just do solid colors, it's different because, so for example, you have uh, Space Marines. So, okay, over here, you're gonna paint a Dark Angel and over here, you're gonna paint a Howling Griffin. Now, Howling Griffin is red and yellow and it's quartered. So red, red, yellow, yellow. And I gotta tell you, that takes at least time and a half to do that pattern. Even a halved pattern, it takes, it takes longer. You gotta shift years. So same thing with Harlequin, it's gotta be four, five, or six. And, um, Let's see here. Uh, PSA, if you do level seven stuff through us, there you, 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 gotta, you gotta be ready for the timetable to work around the artists. Uh, okay, so that's the troop. So let's take a look at the Star Weaver. So my opinion here, well, it's, it has two hole points. It's 10 all around and open topped. So that's like the weakest thing that there possibly is. So let's look at defensive measures other than Jink. Now, if, if Jink is great if it's a, just a transport, but you're not relying on it for its firepower, it doesn't have a lot of firepower. Uh, so these guys have, they have two shuriken cannons, that's nice, it's three shots, three shots. Uh, the Venom cannon has six and six. What's going on? Come on, guys. Uh, but the shuriken cannons are uh, strength six AP, Five, which is real, they, they can take those light transports. Ballistic skill four is awesome. They have holo fields, so there's, there's some survivability there because vehicles don't normally get like an invuln save, save unless it's like a jink or cover or something like that. So holo fields is a nice feature. It's a five up, just straight up, always has it. And uh, six models. That's why I, in my example for a troop, I made it six guys. Of course, a lot of times you're gonna end up adding a character, which I'm not talking about in this video. I'm not the care. I haven't, I haven't really even looked at them that much. Except the Shadow Seer, which can be with Veil of Tears, which makes it so that you have to like roll to see if you can hit them. It's kind of like a night fighting type of thing, except the range is like really low. It's 2d6 times two. So on average, 14 inches, you have to be within 14 inches to shoot at them with that power on them. And Veil of Tears, please don't be Warp Charge 2. Warp Charge 1, fantastic. So, uh, in fact, you know what? I kind of want to look at the Shadow Seer right now just to see what level of Psyker he is. I'm predicting a 2, but if he were a 3, that would be ridiculous. Hold on. Oh, he's only 1! Okay, so back to the Star Weaver. So, Star Weaver is kind of like a about, you know, it's 70 points. There it is. So, uh, but they also, it causes fear. I can't figure out how vehicles having fear helps them at all. Like, don't you just hit vehicles always on a certain amount? Or, or does it, uh, yeah, that's weird. Or do vehicles just count as weapon skill one? Ah, oh, I wonder, I'll, you know, I'll let you guys look that up. So, because I'm thinking if it's like vehicles, to determine hitting vehicles, their weapon skill one. Well, fear could make it so you're only hit on a four up. So that could be that could be nice, kind of a kind of a throwaway thing. Did, now, does uh, and they know sh they shall know no fear from Space Marines. Get rid of the fear rule. Probably does. Um, 
In which case, fear is nice, but probably not going to come into play that often, you know? Uh, but, okay, so the, but it does have mirage launchers, which are nice, and let me tell you why. Uh, is that instead of jinking, so that means their, uh, their shooting power is not diminished, they get uh, four up invuln against shooting, oh, just shooting attacks. Would have been nice. Uh, until the start of their next move phase. Oh, hold on. One take, guys. One take. Hey guys, that was the post. I really don't want to edit this video. I want to just get it up there. So, um, okay, great. Packages coming in, packages going out. Fantastic. Ah, that's good. That's what life is all about. Not packages, but exchange, exchange of experiences, exchange of life. You work for your money, spend your money here. It's our honor. We spend our lives doing something for you. And you know, I once, I once counted that there were like 25 children who were being fed through this company, you know? So, all right, uh, let's see. We were going to the Star Weaver. So yeah, that's all I gotta say about the Star Weaver. Uh, okay, so let's look at the Sky Weavers. Arr. So here's what I see. They're, they're, uh, they do have two wounds, which is nice. Their toughness four, kind of middle of the road, really. Um, and you might think, isn't toughness three like the average? No, because nothing has toughness two. Toughness four is kind of middle of the road for the game. And they, but they only have a four up save. They don't even have the jet bike save of three up. Ah, uh, but they do have, they do get a holo suit, which is nice. So they have a five up invuln, that's a big deal. And uh, they get star bolas. Now star bolas are uh, bolas are one use only, and they um, hold on. Strength six, AP two, twelve inch range, blast. So not too bad. You could really hurt somebody with one of those things. And again, it kind of you know runs.